Thor isn't just some dude with a heavy hammer that I'm totally not in love with. He is the God of Thunder, able to summon lightning at his whim and fry his enemies. We've explored every other power on this show except for this one, so let's finish it. How does Thor summon lightning? This question comes from Alvin Rubio on Twitter. Is there a way that Thor's hammer can summon lightning that fits with other explanations of why people can't lift Thor's hammer and how the demigod flies? I think so, but first I'm gonna have to put the hammer down right here. Boop. My favorite explanation for Thor's hammer's powers is that it can emit a theoretical particle called a graviton, which can effectively make the hammer more massive. We discussed this on previous episodes of Because Science, and this bit of speculative science is even canonized in Indestructible Hulk number eight. If Thor's hammer could emit more virtual graviton particles than its 19 kilograms of uru otherwise would, yes, Neil deGrasse Tyson, you're wrong about how heavy this is. Then it could fundamentally alter gravitational interactions and effect effectively make itself more massive in response to anyone, even the strongest heroes, trying to pick it up. That's a bicep. There's some veins. I'm a strong boy. This power over gravity could also allow Thor to fly. You've seen him pick up his hammer and spin it before taking off, right? Well, that's possible thanks to the conservation of momentum. If he got it spinning really fast, then let go, and the hammer suddenly made itself much, much more massive, then it would feel as though Thor is being pulled along by a moving train. But can an Asgardian enchantment that increases effective mass really give Thor sick lightning summoning powers? Well, that depends on how lightning works. Inside your typical thundercloud, you have gusts of air blowing around small particles like soft hail, water droplets, ice crystals, and the heavier particles tend to fall lower in the cloud than the lighter particles do. And when they do, they bump into those particles and acquire a negative charge, while the lighter particles acquire a positive charge. Now we have a charge separation in the cloud. Now that we have large pools of charges inside of our thundercloud, lightning is ready to start. Somehow, we actually don't know how lightning starts. We think it might be cosmic rays. But once it does start, it forms channels of ionized gas, which is gas with electrons ripped from it, called leaders. And these leaders shoot out in both directions, downwards and upwards. The negatively charged leaders are the ones you typically see during a storm. These leaders don't carry much current until the negatively charged leaders reach something with a positive charge, like a building or a person or the ground. And then there is an equalization of up to 20,000 amps of current. That's what we see as the return stroke as light races back up into the sky at a significant percentage of the speed of light charge is actually still flowing downwards. And that discharge heats up the air around it so rapidly that it creates a pressure wave that we call thunder. Oh! Knowing how lightning works, where does Mjolnir fit in? Thor's hammer can change its effective mass by emitting virtual graviton particles. So what if instead of emitting particles in all directions, Thor's hammer instead directed them straight upwards? Then the heavy particles in the clouds directly above Thor's hammer would suddenly get heavier and create a pool of charges. And then Thor's hammer could act like the only ground around for the negatively charged leaders coming out of the storm. And once the lightning hits the hammer, another beam could shoot out and alter the charge potential in the surrounding air such that the lightning would take the path of least resistance and go wherever Thor wants. Lightning usually searches for a ground in 60 meter spheres, so this would be the attack's range. At least that's my theory. Gravitons are theoretical particles and suddenly changing something's mass is kind of cheating in physics. Still, maybe having a hammer that can alter local gravity such that charge separations occur in the surrounding air and generate lightning is simply magic that we don't understand yet. Because science. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Twitter where you can suggest ideas for future episodes and I will credit you and on Instagram where I'm now posting mini episodes like I did today. There is one problem with the gravitational attraction theory is that if you were emitting a beam that was strong enough to alter gravity such that particles would fall out of the air in different ways, 
it's probably enough gravity to start attract more gravity than the Earth has and starts attracting everything to the hammer, which might be, that might be a cool attack in and of itself. Gravity hammer. You're probably aware that the phrase lightning never strikes the same place twice is a myth, but you can actually prove that. Lightning bolts have a known width, have a known area. It's about this big so that when they strike the ground, there's an area of ground that they strike. So if you know how many lightning strikes occur on average a year and the surface area of the earth, you can calculate that in a few thousand years, lightning, if it never struck the same place more than once, would have already struck every available surface on earth. So you can prove that with math.